People are finding cities unlivable. They're looking for alternative places to live. The challenges with most of small town America is that it was gutted by globalization. There's no more mom and pops. Many, many small towns had interstates built around them, but the infrastructure still exists. And they don't have the same problem that persists in big cities with gentrification by pushing people further out. These small towns are actually facing population decline. Old folks live there, their kids left, they don't wanna come back. So all of this infrastructure in small town America is either going to turn into dust or get reused in interesting and creative ways. And so Art City is ultimately trying to prove out that thesis that we can use art and we can revitalize small towns that would otherwise turn to dust and create an alternative way for people to live more creatively. Hello and welcome to Tuesdays with Morrissey, where we share insights from great thinkers. And I'm excited to be joined by the most famous artist, Maddie Monahan, prolific artist behind many great murals, brand projects, and currently building Art City in Tucumcari, New Mexico. Maddie Mo, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. Pleasure to be here. Over the last 10 years, you've made quite the splash, creating headline-worthy stuns from the $100,000 cash stacks to the private jet experience and my personal favorite, the Utah Monolith. You worked in tech for a while, so I'm curious to learn how and why you shifted into art full time. I think your question presupposes a narrow definition of art, the definition of art as collectible, a status game amongst the elites. Um, I entered the art market, one, because it's, it's therapeutic to make art, and I quite enjoy that expression, but two, because there's this whole world of art outside of the fine art world where artists and creatives are looking for new and innovative ways to finance, produce, and distribute their work. And I'm focused on that, which means a whole bunch of ancillary businesses with art as a core value uh, of the business. Do you have a working definition of art? You know, everyone has a different definition for art and mine is no more right than yours. For example, what is your working definition of art and why does art matter? My working definition of art is art is anything that inspires people to live their lives more fully. And that's a little broad, but for me, it's like, you know, if something makes you cry, that is, you know, inspiring you to live a very human emotion more fully. I think of like a great rock show as art too, because it, like, you know, you see Leon Bridges booging all over the stage uh, and you're like, wow, I want to live my life more fully because that guy has got, is so expressive and so authentic. Yeah. And that's slightly different than my definition, which is around art as something that connects us. You know, a poet and a mathematician can look at an object and all of a sudden connect on a level they wouldn't otherwise because of their professional careers or their views of the world. Um, and my definition is no more right than yours. Um, I think that's what's cool about art is it's a very open space. Yeah, I think it gives space for a lot of things to be art down to the way we treat people, which I think is really ex an exciting possibility because it opens up a, a whole world full of potential artists. Absolutely. Did you have any inspirations? You obviously done some things really differently. Like were there people that you look to that inspired you to do some of this stuff? You know, Mike, the context is I went to school at Stanford and was kind of um, institutionalized into Silicon Valley. And so I learned quite a lot about operating lean startups and iterating and and alternative ways of financing ventures and stuff like that. So I think general my general understanding of the Silicon Valley ethos influenced my art trajectory, along with my my love of like tricksters. Like the mythology of tricksters is quite interesting. Tricksters are the one that create culture. They create stories, they create lore. Um, there's a great book called The Trickster Makes This World, which very much influenced my, my practice. Um, I think a great trickster is an artist like Banksy, mm -hmm. identity abstracted or completely anonymous, depending on how much you know, um, and able to make simple images that tell an amazing story and get people connected on ideas. Can you talk a little bit about what went into the private jet experience? Most certainly. My background was in advertising technology and, and serving up ads into news feeds and figuring out how to get people to click things. Um, so my art practice kind of evolved to start with a headline. 
I challenge my studio to say, what is the headline that we want to create? And then I ultimately reversed engineered how to make that headline happen and get it placed. So trying to construct headlines paired with um, like a keen sense of pattern recognition allows me to look and perhaps not uniquely, but to look at a newsfeed and see kind of like what the algorithm is serving up and what is topical in a given point of time. And at the time, there was a whole bunch of people that started flexing by posting pictures of themselves on private jets on Instagram. So much so that like rappers, not to just call out rappers, many people would do this, but there was a particular instance of a rapper like Little Bow Wow going on to a private jet he presumably rented and did not fly with a bunch of stacks of fake cash. And that was circulating. There was discussion about it. And it was, it was really like part of culture in 2017, 2018. And I thought it would be quite funny to kind of disrupt that narrative entirely by creating a facsimile of a private jet that folks could take a picture inside of and produce the illusion that they're living this like really amazing lifestyle, hopefully pulling back the curtains to the common person that most of Instagram is a farce. And what'd you charge for people to take a picture there? So as an art object, I just set it up at uh, an art fair in Miami and then brought it back to Los Angeles and set it up in, a, in like a Fred Siegel boutique and just let people take pictures of it. I ultimately ended up selling that art object to a collector. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I like that. It's because I remember re reading articles that were insinuating incorrectly that people were paying and which actually people were because people like Lil Bow Wow were, they just weren't happen happened to be paying for the private jet experience that you were offering. Coincidentally, after I did that project, there were a number of services that popped up where someone would rent like a retail space in, in, on Melrose in, in Los Angeles and put an experience there for influencers to take pictures of. So there were, there was a cottage industry of fake private jet, uh, venues following my art object. When you see stuff like that, like what comes to mind to you in regards to what you see and learn about human nature? I think between 2013 and 14, when I started kind of investigating social media and making it the content of my art um, and humans interaction with social media, I thought it was all very humorous and funny. And then in like 2016, 17, 18, it started to feel like social media was becoming weaponized and it became really hard to want to make art around like military grade weapons. And so in the beginning it was jovial and fun. And there was this, this aha moment where I realized, oh, wow, uh, the thing I've been making art about and poking fun at is actually like really divisive and super bad. And then that movie, uh, the social network mm -hmm. came out on Netflix and kind of exposed the whole thing. Um, somewhere in the back of my mind, I kind of knew that that was happening as I was building ad technology that was all about getting people's attention, no matter what. Um, and I guess we're dealing with the consequences of, of, of that now. You said before that you, you feel like art generally isn't a good business for many. What inspired you to help look at this differently to help more independent artists make it a financially sustainable practice? Sure. To go back to my ad tech days, I would run ads that would help people sell things online. And I started to kind of pattern recognize what the characteristics were of a really good direct to consumer product. And some of those characteristics, not to name all of them, but some of them are, it's either tell by purchasing the product, the person tells a story about it or photographs it and distributes it virally. So that's art. Art works in that way. Um, it's lightweight to ship. And in that case, prints are a really good, high margin, easy to ship thing. So when thinking about starting my own direct to consumer business following, you know, building ad tech, I thought art would be a great product. It also gave me a lot of latitude. Um, I wanted kind of the freedom and space to explore. I didn't want to say I'm a t-shirt brand. As an artist, I've sold all sorts of different things from a brick of cash to a flea market painting to, to you know, all, all sorts of things. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm alluding to, I've made an NFT of my own feces to raise money for uh, gut health awareness <laughs> through, 
through a company called Seed. So like you can sell all sorts of things through art. Seed probiotic. Ultimately, seed probiotic. That's right. Yeah. It's called the most shittiest NFT. Nice. I don't know if I'm allowed to say yeah, that. On yeah, totally. yeah, totally. Yeah, totally allowed. Um, anyway, it's it's a it's a dynamic product. And the more I got into it, the more I started visiting museums, I started to realize there's this whole world of people that came before me that kind of established the standards and built the canons and kind of constructed the the framework through which people think about fine art and tinkering with that and playing with the edges of that became really exciting to me. I want to talk a little bit about how impactful art can be. And you had a chance to see it at a small scale from like a retail level with some of the murals. Can you talk a little bit about what you saw some of this art and kind of Instagramable type uh, murals had on local businesses? Sure. One of my, one of my earliest collaborators was a coffee brand then small at the time called Alfred in Los Angeles. And they've kind of become known for the phrase, but first coffee. And also they're kind of really well designed cinematic, if you will, coffee shops. And early on, they needed someone to paint a mural. I came along, painted a mural for them. It was polka dots. It was highly selfie friendly. And what they started to notice were folks were taking a picture of their cup in front of this mural and that created a brand identity. Uh, and that, that ultimately created like a picture for like elite coffee drinkers to go get in Melrose. And so over time we started, they started to put in more shops. I started to paint more murals and we realized we had kind of created a platform and that platform could be sold to movie studios or music, music or record companies looking to market hyper locally, their product in a novel way. And so what, what started to happen was I was being paid to paint murals on behalf of brands like Bumble or movie studios so that the coffee cup with a sleeve branded by that movie studio created this cohesive experience that advertisers couldn't get elsewhere. And so that all kind of happened by happenstance, but that's one example of early on how I started to see retail as a distribution space for art and develop new models for monetizing it. And to zoom out a little bit, part of your thesis and what you're doing at Art City is to do that at, at the scale of a city. Is that right? Yeah. Ultimately, Art City is about bringing together uh, knowledge workers and creative professionals looking to leave kind of declining cities and find peace and solitude and community and affordable life in alternative locations. The means through which I get there, the mechanism through which I get there is I built a large scale sculpture park that people are coming to experiencing, taking pictures of, and ultimately creating this viral flywheel for a physical space. Talk a little bit about the project you're doing in Tukumkari. Sure. So it, it kicked off in 2019 when I first visited a town called Marfa, Texas. Have you been there or heard of it? I haven't it? been there, but I live in Austin and I've driven in the same region, but I haven't been to Marfa. I'm, I'm familiar so with Prada, you, Prada Marfa and kind of Bohemian. And there's some like kind of upscale luxury tent rentals and a lot of some kind of artist types, but it's small and there's a, an intimate community there. Yeah. There's about 2000 people, um, many of which are feeling the pains of gentrification. It's become this cultural destination for the, art world elites um and it's totally changed the economy of this town that would have otherwise fallen fallen into disrepair i saw that project and what what was interesting was seeing it at its in state and then having the aha moment that an artist moved there in the 80s and kind of kicked off this entire revitalization now zoom out even further what i'm kind of seeing like so what i saw first during the pandemic was the fragility of big cities and kind of the absurdity of living in a big city if you can work remotely or all you need is space and time to create the things you love making. Um, so I personally moved out to New Mexico and I found this small town that had all of these criteria that were moving in its favor for me to be able to replicate the thing that happened in Marfa as a long-term, long timescale project for myself rather than thinking about the next headline thinking about a long-term vision that I can focus on and apply my skills to. 
if we zoom out, like people are finding cities unlivable. They're looking for alternative places to live. The challenges with most of small town America is that it was gutted by globalization. There's no more mom and pops. Many, many small towns had interstates built around them, but the infrastructure still exists. Mm -hmm. And they don't have the same problem that persists in big cities with gentrification by pushing people further out. These small towns are actually facing population decline. Old folks live there, their kids left, they don't want to come back. So all of this infrastructure in small town America is either going to turn into dust or get reused in interesting and creative ways. And so Art City is ultimately trying to prove out that thesis that we can use art and we can revitalize small towns that would otherwise turn to dust and create an alternative way for people to live more creatively. Now that's a really pie in the sky, ambitious vision for what we're trying to, what I'm trying to do here. Um, but at the end of the day, it boils down to just quality of life. I think it's a great mission. My grandfather's from a place in Ohio called Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, Ohio was in between, is still in between Cleveland and Pittsburgh and was like a, a industrial town. And since some factories moved and closed, it now has the lowest per capita income of any city over 60,000 people. And like a national uh, foreclosed home rate, 20 times the national average. And there's a lot of cities like that. It's not that uncommon of a, of a story. So I think it's a really noble pursuit to try to bring some life and hopefully some economic development back to these places. Yeah, and, and I'm enjoying my life either way. I'm, I'm enjoying my life, whether this turns into the next great art town or I just live in a cool small town with people I like and get to make more art and tinker on the Internet. And what is like a, a finished art? And is Art City the name for like the, the this city in Tucumcari or is it like the broader for this project to revitalize towns with art and creatives? Yeah, Art City is a... Uh, a umbrella company that is developing different projects and this large scale sculpture glamping site on 40 acres in Tucumcari, New Mexico is one such venture. Um, you know, a couple things could happen with Art City. With most business I do, I, I should say with all business I do, I try to pencil in a 25% return. And so I, I thought like, how could I execute this quickly? How could I do it as efficiently as possible and prove whether or not it's going to work? And this time next year, I'll know if I attracted a whole bunch of people, built a viral fly loop, ultimately got a bunch of people to come out and hang out and camp out and stay in glamping sites in this small town and see what kind of economic impact that has. Um, this also could be so successful that it gets franchised out. There's a business called KOA, which is a number of campgrounds that I believe is a publicly traded company. And you know, we could go in and buy some underperforming KOAs, turn them into art cities and just show an alternative way to make and market the the glamping camping uh, lifestyle. Yeah. And I think it's super relevant. I mean, I, I used to work in real estate and real estate development, and there was a ton of interest in campsites and RV parks because they're so resistant to downturns. And I don't know about you, but like, I think we could be in for some sort of economic shakeup. A reckoning so like we need some of these opportunities places for like more people might benefit from this yeah there's certainly a limited upside and some serious downside to our current situation um one thing i will say though is there there is a class of people that have never been wealthier mm -hmm. and they're yeah. looking for the wildest craziest thing they can find and if flying a private jet into Tucumcari, New Mexico to rent out Art City for the weekend to throw their birthday party is what they do, that would be fantastic. And we're kind of well positioned for that kind of thing. And what's that, what goes into creating a 40 acre mini city immersive experience campsite? A lot. <laughs> um, it starts with land acquisition. And I tried to do that as intelligently as possible. Uh, I was able to talk to a rancher and seller finance a piece of land. So my my capital invested is is minimal and my uh, debt service is, is minimal as well. Um, I found a piece of property with city water and power, but located in the county where there's fewer building, bu uh, fewer ordinances. Um, the 
the gathering of art was a, an interesting challenge, talking to a whole bunch of big scale artists and trying to figure out how to coordinate the delivery and installation of their work. Um, then then I, one thing I didn't consider when I started building this is the hospitality angle of this whole thing. Like what is the visitor experience like? Uh, what, are, what are the human touch points? What are the digital touch points? Um, I'm now going through kind of optimizing and figuring out how to do that well. Um, I think at a high level, this is so emergent that everything's going to be new and interesting and challenging. And for like, how, how do you pick up a city like Tucumcari versus other cities? Sure. I had a couple criteria. Um, one was within two hours of major airports. Mm -hmm. So Tucumcari has three airports, Albuquerque, Amarillo, and Santa Fe, all within two-ish hours. It also has a private jet airport here. Um, you can land a big jet here. It's on a thoroughfare. So I-40, which uh, was kind of the replacement for Route 66, sees roughly 20,000 cars pass by a town like Tucumcari every single day. Um, the primary industries here are agriculture and tourism. So that means one, there's great natural resources, specifically water and land to grow stuff on. Lots of, lots of cattle being raised here. Um, and two, the tourism industry already exists, so we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just adding a new flavor. And so the town, because it was originally a Route 66 town, has something like 2,000 available motel rooms in the town many hundreds of people every single night pass through and stay in these hotels. But because there's not other industry here, there's only a few restaurants to go to, a few museums and people pass on. The hope with Art City is we can create a stickiness. So we can create cultural gatherings, we can create concerts, we can create movie nights, we can create a space for people to gather and hang out for a few days. And that should have a material impact on gross receipts tax, mm -hmm. which ultimately will be used to build better stuff in the town and increase the quality of life for the people living here. Hey, can you talk a little bit about the process of getting, if it, if it happened, if it was necessary to get people from the town on board with a project like this? Sure. I moved to the small town because I found a great property that would make me happy. I built my art studio here. Um, life was good. I spent about two years just getting to know the people in the town and making sure that I would have support if I was to do this venture. Um, many people at the beginning thought I was totally crazy saying that Tucum Carry is the next great art town. They're starting to see the vision now that Art City is live and real and people are going to it, enjoying it, and the town's come out and checked it out. Um, but during those first two years, I went and played a lot of golf with the, you know, the grandfathers of Tucum Carry. I volunteered at the Elks Lodge to cook burgers on burger night. I got to know folks and tried to be helpful and showed my face at coffee shops and made people realize like I'm not going anywhere. Built rapport with the right service people, the electricians, the plumbers, the the folks that make the, the town work. Got to know the city manager, the county manager, went to commission meetings, gave public, public addresses a few times when necessary. Um, and I think I did it in an organic way that had I not felt in my gut good about it, I probably wouldn't have done it. And that that was a good feedback loop. You know, there's an example called California Forever where a whole bunch of billionaires just bought 60,000 acres outside of the San Francisco Bay Area. And the whole town's like in an uproar about this, like secret, secret acquisition of all this land. And I suppose had the billionaires really wanted to do this, they would have taken a softer approach uh, and gotten to know the people around them before they decided to plop down and make a thing happen. Now, I'm not saying my entry has been perfect. There's still haters, but I attribute that less to like what I'm trying to do and more to this small town mentality I've observed, which is that of we've got a pie. And if an outsider comes in and takes a slice of our pie, there's less for everyone else. And what I'm trying to suggest is that we can create a pie factory. We can have as many pies as everyone wants. If we can work together and figure this out. Yeah. How do you go about, I mean, there's so many stakeholders here, mostly like the townspeople and the artist I see as like kind of the two sides of the platform. Obviously you have the guests that will come in and out. How do you align the incentives to make sure the right groups benefit? 
Um, I, I think it's, again, it goes back to just operating with rapport and, and checking your gut and just being, being generally like transparent with what you're trying to do. Um, I haven't, I don't think I've made any promises to artists that are outlandish and for the most part, unless there's some back channel, all the participating artists, there's 12 sculptures live on this place. They all had a really good experience coming to Art City, installing their work, getting to know the community and the town. Um, and then on the flip side, uh, the folks in town that want to engage and are excited about potentially positive change are there to support. And the others may just comment anonymously on Facebook. Yeah, are you seeing some of that? No, I, I, I think that persists everywhere. Like one observation I've had is that this this town lives on Facebook and I, I haven't had a Facebook account for like almost a decade. And I got back on Facebook and I realized like what's happening here. Um, and I'm I'm curious to join other small town Facebook group chats to, or group, uh, group pages just to see is, uh, is this town similar to others? Because if it is, then there's potentially a way to to fix small town America. And by fix, I mean, bring new industry in, mm -hmm. increase people's quality of life and, and kind of fix the, the things that globalization caused. Why do you think it is we're seeing, you know, you mentioned that billionaire city, which is drastically different from this, but like you hear about other people trying to make different types of cities or alternative communities. Why do you think it's so many people are thinking about this shift? I think there's just a lot of capital in the hands of some folks that have big visions. That's one thing that's happening. Like a lot of these are getting funded by Silicon Valley. Um, I think like rejecting the status quo is part of that ethos. Um, there are ways to optimize and do better. And I think many of the systems we've got in place for govern local governance and state level governance are perhaps antiquated and could use like change. So if you can create an environment in which you can experiment with things and prove value, then all of a sudden you can, you can scale everywhere. Um, so that's why it's interesting. So for example, if art city is this destination and tourism increase and people start buying homes and the population increases, then perhaps this is the, the blueprint or the playbook for revitalizing small towns, providing alternative ways for people that are especially creative or knowledge workers to live outside of big cities. If not, I'm still having a good time doing it. Yeah. And you can still, I mean, it, it, this can be sustainable. It can be a sustainable venture that benefits the town it's in, even if people don't end up moving here, but just come and enjoy the town. You know, it would be really cool to see like new million person cities form. The amount of bureaucracy, red tape, and just coordination involved in making that thing happen is quite challenging. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. What was the backstory behind the name, the most famous artist? It was really like luck and happenstance. I was thinking about making art and then I Googled like, who's the most famous artist and then realized like a lot of people were referred to as the most famous artists, but I could just be the most famous artist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. You can just assume that domain authority on the internet through handles and yeah, when you look up the most famous artist, you have like Matty Mo and um, who do you typically see? Who do you typically run up against? Sometimes it's Picasso yep. or or Van Gogh or Warhol, Frida Kahlo. It's hilarious, and it's <laughs> um, I'd say my art is like funny and viral. I don't, I take like the exercise of thinking through how to execute something very seriously, but the end result is often quite silly when you're playing with the particular constraints I am, which is how do you make the masses pay attention to something? Yeah. What's your strategy to do that? I mean, was it, did you find it was easier doing to do that while living in California than living in New Mexico? Um, no, I think you can tap into culture and memes from anywhere. You don't need to be in LA to like tap into LA's culture and memes, especially if you follow the right people. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure I've got a, a playbook because the, the game keeps changing. You know, two years ago, TikTok wasn't a thing. And now I'm like, so addicted to TikTok. I don't know what to do with myself um, <laughs> other than delete TikTok. Yeah. Um, 
new things are happening. Like AI is so interesting and totally changes the way I think about creating content and, and marketing things. Um, and most of my art is just like demonstrating the ability to hack the mainstream media or hack the consumer's mind. I'm less intrigued by that now. I, th I think I've proven my point and now I'm more interested in solitude and peace and uh, growing vegetables and going for long walks and reading um, when I don't have TikTok on my phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just had um, a conversation with Stephen Pressfield who wrote The War of Art and one of his concepts is you have the hero's journey where you're trying to find your life's purpose then you have your artist journey, which is after the hero's journey. And that period is actually quite boring. And it's kind of like what Ram Dass would say. It's chopping wood and carrying water. It's just doing the work and appreciating the mundane and the simplicity of the day to day. Yeah. And I think that's where the good ideas come from. Like when I'm most bored, often the good ideas come. Not when I'm traveling and taking in all this stuff or socializing constantly. It's when I'm so bored that I let my mind wander and then I find the idea. Are there any projects uh, outside of Art City that you're incubating? Um, I'm, I'm thinking about making art again. I haven't made art in three years. It's funny, I moved to this small town, set up an art studio, started hosting artist residents, now built a sculpture park and glamping site and haven't made any art. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose, well, you, suppose the you have, art. because if art, the purpose of art is to bring people together, you're creating a different form of art. Sure. So it's a meta art form. I'm, I'm interested in getting back into making sculptural art specifically with the goal of kind of like, um, I, I want to say marketing art city, but ultimately like creating lore around this thing I'm trying to do. Um, so that for sure, I'm. I'm quite interested in local economies now and local governance. And so I'm just studying that, like studying where, where dollars come from in towns like Tucumcari, what other towns are like Tucumcari. Um, is there, are there common threads around America? Is there like a, a larger thesis here? So practically speaking, running art city, pie in the sky, how big can this thing get? and then kind of therapeutically making art. Yeah, I, I, I share that too. I've been thinking an awful lot about the cross section of a meaningful life or an inspired life and economic mobility, because I think those are gonna be at the forefront. Were there any, were there any, do you have any good stories from like recruiting the artists? Was there one that stands out to you that was like a, a pretty interesting uh, courting process? Yeah, I think like the one that stands out most was the artist I reached out to who said that'll never work and I don't want to participate. And that artist is a very successful one and told me basically I, it couldn't be done. Um, and as a result, I did it. So I appreciate the rejection in that particular artist's uh, experience with me and found found like drive out of that, uh, that interaction. Did you, uh, did you interact with Tom Sachs at all? I know of Tom Sachs. Uh, I think we've exchanged a few likes on Instagram. I really like his work. Yeah. I saw him, uh, in Dallas, Texas, a couple of years ago, he had his immersive Japanese tea ceremony set up at the Nasher sculpture garden. So when I, when I've throughout this entire conversation, I couldn't help but thinking about him. And uh, some of the work he's done, maybe at one point he could do a Japanese tea ceremony, which he considers to be mankind's greatest gift to the universe at Art City. That would be lovely. Yeah, we've we've effectively created a cool venue off Route 66 um, for people to come and experiment. One thing we're we're thinking through is like a self-organizing weekend once once a month, maybe around full moon. And the general idea is you would buy your right to camp at the site. You'd be added to a group chat and then everyone else would self-organize what the thing is. Hmm. So we're just providing the platform through which people to come together and start to figure out like who's going to bring the ice water and who's going to be a vendor. And is someone going to cook and sell the food? Or are they going to give away the food? Are they going to pool their money and allow for people just to experiment 
in a cool space. Awesome. Well, I look forward to keeping up with it. What's the best way for people to keep up with the with you and the work you're doing at Art City? Yeah, so visit themostfamousartist.com to get contacts around me and my work. Uh, you can find my email there as well. Uh, and visitartcity.com is our website if you'd like to come check out the thing we built. Awesome. Well, we'll have links to themostfamousartists.com and visitartcity.com in the show notes. Matty Mo, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. Thank you for listening to Tuesday's Morrissey. That conversation was with the most famous artist, Matty Monahan the artist behind many great murals and brand projects currently building Art City in Tucumcari, New Mexico. What I enjoyed about the show was Matt's emphasis on how art can be used to bring people together and revitalize America's cities. If you enjoyed the show, share it with a friend and we'll see you here soon. Thanks. Thanks.